to another video and I am really sorry for the delay in uh, doing one of these videos. Um, the reason for the delay is recently uh, I've had some medical issues pop up and uh, haven't been able to do kind of like a dialogue um, video kind of like this. Um, this video is actually a little bit special because of my heart problems. I wanted to do something uh, for the Heart Association and for FTR's campaign, uh, Fight Like an Eight-Year-Old Girl. I know it sounds funny, but uh, it actually means a lot um, because of his daughter's fight with a uh, uh, hole in her heart. So uh, this is kind of in uh, honor of that. And at the same time, uh, kind of another video where I do not such a quick time lapse. Uh, this is only sped up four times, so it's a little bit of a longer video than normal. Uh, I wanted to really focus on uh, the little bits that I do here because uh, I really don't show a lot of my pencil technique. Uh, a lot of a lot of what I do recently is digital, and um, as much as I like digital, to me it's still a crutch. Um, every now and then I like to still draw in pencil, ink, uh, mixed media, and this one is mostly pencil. Near the end, you'll see that I use a, a white gel pen. And uh, for the wording on the shirt, I used uh, black ink. Um, but this is Dax Harwood from the tag team FTR on AEW, and it's his daughter. Uh, I asked for permission just because she is a minor to draw her, uh, and uh, he gave me the okay. So uh, this is on Bristol 11 by 17, but the actual image is closer to 8 by 10 because I plan to cut it out and uh, frame it. Uh, and then hopefully either give it to his family and whatever they want to do with it or uh, if they want to auction it off for the Heart Association. Um, it was a lot of fun to be able to draw in pencil again. Uh, I've been having some issues with my hip and found out that uh, I have torn labrum. Uh, that on top of my back problems have made it really difficult to draw sitting down. So. A lot of the videos that you guys see are actually uh, me drawing in bed uh, on the iPad. So I think that's why I've kind of uh, felt more comfortable using the iPad lately because I can actually draw laying down, but I do miss drawing on paper and sketchbook. Um, so this was a lot of fun. It just took me a while because I had to take a lot of breaks. So if you see like a break in, in the image where things got progressively better it's because I took it to my bed to draw a little bit more or I just stopped and I just forgot to hit record <laughs> uh, human error I guess uh, but this was a lot of fun to do and um, I'm just gonna go over some of the processes I use so for the face um, the actual image and I'll show it here in the video the actual image uh, is color so I had to grayscale it down and then after I grayscaled it, uh, then I zoomed into different parts and there's different parts where the light was hitting it in different directions. So instead of just going in with a uh, blender, I started just hatching in, in one direction and then overlapping. And when you do that, it actually creates a, a nice uh, layer effect and adds a little bit more depth to the pencil drawing that you normally wouldn't get if uh, if you just blend it if you blend it kind of looks messy and then you kind of have to work around that and erase a lot and I didn't want to have too many eraser marks because Bristol paper uh, when you erase too hard on it it leaves uh, lines uh, just like when you draw too hard on it it leaves lines so I was trying to avoid that and so that's why I came up with the idea where the heavier shaded areas I was actually gonna layer pencil on pencil and I didn't have to use my other blending technique, which is to use an H pencil because it's a hard pencil. So it blends B pencils a lot easier. So I avoided that. And I think the end result, there's a lot of depth. There's still some areas where I could have darkened it up a little bit more, which I might do when it's time to frame it right before I add the fixative. Um, spray fixative is a great tool to have because when you spray fix, you can still go back but you don't risk ruining the image that you've already put down on paper. Um, and some of the pencils I use, I use an 8B, 4B, uh, HB, 
and then I use my mechanical pencil and then for inking I use my 0.3 uh, Copic uh, Copic pen and I believe I ended up using just a little bit for the thicker areas of like the, where it says eight and year I used my brush pen I didn't want to use it too much because I learned from the anime image that if I use too much uh, of the brush pen it doesn't sink into the paper so it stays on a layer and so if you happen to brush your hand across it you could smudge the drawing and I was trying to avoid that at all costs uh, so that's why I tried to use the ink sparingly because I could have darkened up his eyes with ink or his mustache but I thought leaving it in pencil was going to be a better technique and you can see here the layering techniques working really great because um, areas where I thought were going to be kind of flat now I just can erase it out and it kind of creates depth um, another technique that I, I ended up using was uh, later on in the video was the white pen um, I was trying to keep it just grayscale because the picture I ended up having to filter it in grayscale and uh, but I think for the finished one when I send it off to Dax or his family is uh, I'm gonna color the heart so anything that's red or the heart I'm gonna color in red so his daughter has little red hearts on her shirt but when you grayscale it it's gonna be gray so I'm gonna actually go back with uh, either a Copic or a, a color pencil um, probably Copic because Copic is going to be a lot more vibrant and do it in red so that way you can see it and it pops uh, away from the grays and the blacks because uh, black muddies everything but for this it actually it, it tended to work uh, a lot better than I thought um, for uh, the finished image too is hopefully cut it down to i want to say like a 12 by 10 or 12 by 12 so that way i have some room when i do frame it to 8 by 10 there's a little border and i don't completely cut off any of dax's head or um, his uh, bottom legs um, so it's little things like that that i had to think of and so that's why some of it looked a little bit unfinished by the end um, but i'm gonna leave you to the great sounds of the Borderlands 3 menu <laughs> menu music um, and you can enjoy the rest of the video I want to thank everybody who's kind of hang on on the channel uh, with uh, all my health issues in school I know it's been hard to keep up with doing these longer form videos but I was hoping with the shorts is to kind of let everybody know hey I'm still around I'm not going anywhere I have been focusing a lot less on the YouTube side of things so that's why some of them some of my videos have the TikTok or Instagram uh, watermarks on them because I've been posting on there and then reposting it on YouTube uh, it just makes it a little easier for me especially because I just don't have the time to uh, do three separate videos so it's easier to just make one video and share it across three platforms um, if I had a little bit more time then I could probably make specific videos for each three platforms but you get get the drift but um, really enjoy it and I'm gonna leave a link in the description uh, so that if you guys want to donate I never asked for any money on this channel I got rid of patreon a long time ago but if you guys want to donate to the American Art Association I'll leave a link in the description um, you don't have to but uh, I just thought it'd be kind of cool and you could put on there you know FTR or Art Sensei as who sent you um, I really don't know how it works myself uh, but I plan to donate once I have this sent off to Dax but anyways thanks so much for hanging on and being so patient with the channel and thank everybody who's ever watched the video um, and uh, don't forget to keep it over 9,000 take care